Okay, let's address some of the anatomical landmarks of the wrist and the back of the hand, which is the metatarsals. So the, the forearm and hand are extremely complex. There are numerous muscles and tendons that allow for the movement of your fingers. So naturally there's there's a lot of components here which is why we start with the the planes and at a certain point you will have to add some some anatomy so let's see let me move this so let's start over here um, on the outside of the wrist which is the ulna side so when you talk about the wrist you can always refer to it as the ulna side um, or the radial side, the radius side. This is the ulna side, this is the radius side. That's an easy way to, to reference it. So this, this right here, this is actually the ulna. Okay, this is called the styloid process of the ulna. And you're gonna see it on the surface. It's literally the bone on the surface. And it has a certain style to it. Just think styloid process has style. And the style is that it's, it's like, like a comet with a tail. So you sort of have a little, a little bump to the front of it. You can feel it on yourself. Remember I said, there's a space here between your, your styloid process and your, um, metatarsal, your, your fifth metatarsal, which is the pinky metatarsal. So just look for this, this um, kind of hard edge with a, with a tapering tail as it goes back. So that's the actual bone. Underneath it, you'll get a slight um, half tone, let's say, you know, a little darkening. And then below this, this darkening, you'll be able to see the, the flexors of the hand down here. So this is another muscle group down here. There is a tendon, I'm sorry, there's a ligament that goes over the wrist bones. Remember we have this little, little wrist ramp there's going to be a, a ligament here. I forget the name of it, but there's a ligament that helps, you know, keep all those tendons together. And that's also going to contribute to the downward plane of the, um, the wrist. And I just think of that as where you wear a bracelet, a loose bracelet or, or your watch will go there. So look for that, that definite wrist plane before you get to the back of the hand. Now here you have a distinction between a muscle group and a tendon. This is the muscle group of the pinky. So if you flip your hand over, you'll see there's a group here, the squishy part here. Okay, that that's gonna, you know, flex your pinky, it's gonna abduct your pinky it'll adduct it okay so that moves it and this is another group here this is the thumb group we'll get to that next but for the pinky group of muscles observe this elongated triangle that's kind of curved at one end see how that separates from this here, the extensor of the pinky. So on the top of your hand, on the back of the hand, you'll have tendons running from the, from the, you know, the top of the arm out to each finger. And these are the extensors of the digits. So a lot of times you'll see that phrase extensor digitorum, and it's these tendons right here. So remember, extensors extend 
And they're usually very delicate muscles because they're just flicking muscles or opening muscles. Flexors close. So you can see, you know, if I'm flexing, you really see it here, this big group here. Um, these are more vital. Like if you're falling off a cliff and you need to grab onto a branch, these are saving your life. So they're bigger, stronger, right there. Extensors are little. And my teacher always said it was like, extensors are for flicking a fly away. They are more delicate. So just remember that in general, your extensors of the hand are, are smaller and your flexors are stronger. Um, abduction is to take away, so muscles that move digits away from the hand, they're abducting it. Just think of abduction. And then adduction, ADD, adds the, the finger back to the body, brings it in. So those are the kind of the four um, actions of muscles that, that you'll see those terms a lot. And at first it's kind of like, whoa, what is all, you know, what's all this sciencey stuff? And then eventually um, those, those terms will actually help you know what the muscles do. So it'll take several years to get to that point. But um, if you have a, a background in medicine or, you know, if you're an athlete, you might, you might already be familiar with those terms. I was neither, so I sort of had to learn everything from scratch. But, so it took me a long time. Okay, so this, so this is the pinky muscle group, that little swelling there. Here's the extensor of the digit of the pinky. Make the pinky a little shorter. And the, the knuckles, I've, I've sort of started them off camera. They will be um, triangular. I'm sorry, uh, like, like a diamond. Two triangles. You know, once you put that, that tendon over top of the knuckle, it will make them into diamond-like forms. And you can start with a circle, you know, I mean, a, a sphere. I mean, they are, you know, sort of roundy, but once you put that tendon over them, they become like a diamond. You see it on her? So look for those diamonds. And up here you have the um, radius side of the wrist. And this side will be more curved. So it's always broader, more curved, more gradual. Remember, the styloid process of the, of the uh, ulna is sharper, has more style. This is, this is broader. Um, what helps contribute to the, the broadness and curvature of that, too, are the um, extensors of the thumb. You can look up the extensors of the thumb. There are like three of them, I think, that kind of roll just above above the um, head of the radius you'll see you'll see a group here so that that really contributes to that thumb zone being united with the with the hand so just think everything has specific style and character it's not like it's not all random just a bunch of stringy muscles they all have a purpose and they have a certain you know individuality to them So on the back of the hand, you'll have, you'll have the metacarpals, the bones, and you, but on top of that, you have the tendons. So sometimes it's easy to confuse bones for tendons. They, you know, the, the tendons will generally follow the same direction as the bones, but not, not perfectly. Um, the tendons are a little more pinched up here than the bones but they both radiate from the wrist to the fingers. And on top of the 
tendons, you have veins, just to confuse you more. So I think, I think the veins are easy enough to spot. Okay, let's go over to this side, to the, the thumb side. Right in here, you get a form. And the more you sculpt, the bigger this muscle's gonna get. You know, sometimes this gets very sore after a, a long day of sculpting. And Basically, it's, it's your, your thumb muscle group. So there's a triangular webbing in there. And there are a number of muscles there. Now, but the one on top that you see is the dorsal interosseus. Dorsal interosseus. And there are dorsal interossi between each metacarpal. There's four of them, one, two, three, four. The biggest one is the, the first group for the thumb. So if you look in the Peck book, Stephen Rogers Peck book, you'll see he explains this as a triangular plane with an egg-like shape on top of it. So can you see the egg-like shape on me? There it is. You can use yourself as a model for this. So there's a swelling on this triangular plane. And the more you, you close it up, the more it, it'll, it'll bunch out. But you wanna distinguish that from the extensor of the index finger. And from the extensor of the thumb coming down here. Here you'll see the extensor group of the thumb separating from the flexor group of the hand underneath. And then below, below the extensor of the thumb, there's a swelling down here. And this will be the flexor of the thumb, the abductors of the thumb and the adductor of the thumb. So below, below this tendon, you'll see another swelling. And it's just kind of a juicy, meaty mound here. When you flip your hand over, you can basically see it's comprised of three pads. And these two back pads are the ones that move the pinky and the thumb. So this is a big one. So just to review, you have your, your styloid process of the ulna, ulnar furrow, flexors of the hand, the um, flexors of the pinky, separating from the extensor of the pinky. You have your ligament going across the wrist plane. Um, the knuckles are diamond-like. I'll come to the fingers in the next video. And you have your extensors on the back of the hand The radius side is more curvy. And then over here you have the uh, dorsal interosseus, that mound, the egg on top of the triangle.
Really good book for this is the Dunlop book, James Dunlop. Um, the Peck book is really good. Bridgman is also good, George Bridgman. He breaks it down in, in a, a simple way. It's a little bit comic book-like, but actually very good. I'm appreciating him more as I get into this stuff. So that's the uh, dorsal interosseus, the sculptor muscle. And then below the extensor of the thumb, you have that thumb muscle group, flexors, abductors, and abductors of the thumb make that mound down here. Okay, I'll do the fingers next.